Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at the Batman Special All Villain Issue Treasury Size Artifact Edition from DC Comics. This is so freaking cool. I'm so glad they did this. That is what we are looking at today, guys. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. DC has been reprinting a lot of great issues, and I'm so glad they're doing the treasuries. Oh my god, I love treasury size books so much. You know, I did my own treasury size book, of course, the Big Big Bang um, comic anthology, and I just love the size. It's so gorgeous for the art. Um, this is from 1975. The 70s was so great for these uh, uh, treasury size issues. Um, $14.99. I'm sure it was like two fifty dollars or something when it came out. It's all reprints. Um, this great Jim Aparo cover. Love it. He's one of my favorite Batman artists, mostly due to Batman and the Outsiders. Um, and it's, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. It's mostly by, um, Bob Kane on the inside. And from what I understand, I don't have much, like, major knowledge about, like, the history of Batman or... Bob Kane or anything like that, but I believe he sort of used a lot of, like, studio artists to help, like, he wasn't doing everything by himself. You know, there's no, like, letterer credited, there's no colorist credited, and, um, you know, it was, I, I don't even know when they started crediting colorists and letterers, but... I wish it was then because they deserve the props. Anyway, there's like a Joker story, Penguin story, Two-Face story, Scarecrow, and Catwoman. It's so good. Um, so these are reprints. DC calls them Artifact Edition. Marvel calls them Facsimile. It's basically an exact replica, which sort of separates them from a reprint that could be part of a collection or something. This originally came out in 1975. And um, so the few differences, of course, are, you know, the paper quality, the price tag, and um, the year that tells which, you know, what current year this printing is. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's so funny because this is like, you know, Bob Kane, like very early Batman. So the stories are like super corny, such a sign of their times. Everyone's motivated by like stealing jewels and these like jewel heists. I mean, the Batmobile is like this green limousine at this point. This is a great page of the Joker. I love that so much. The coloring is just like such an afterthought and slapped on the page and all over the page. Um, I like how the lettering is kind of like wonky and sometimes comes to like the end of the, the box in a weird way. That's the example I was kind of looking for. Um, and the language is just like the best, the way they talk, um, just like the corny phrases and just like the names they call each other and stuff like that. I just love it. Um, Robin is such a punk. Like, is he supposed to be eight years old at this point? Because I kind of love that. I kind of want to see like a real Batman and Robin movie where he is eight years old because that is just so insane and like... I mean, it could be, he could be kind of like hit girl in a way. I don't know. Would it work? Would it, it would be super problematic in a lot of ways, right? You don't want to see an eight-year-old kid getting beat up, but somehow it was fine back in the day. Joker, and I love their schemes, their wacky schemes. He's like leaving these clues and these Joker cards. And poor naive Robin is having trouble um, figuring out these clues. But Batman, being the world's greatest detective, um, surmised from this card that Joker's next move would be in Ohio. I don't know how he came to that conclusion, but like I said, he is the world's greatest detective. Um, lots of circles throughout, um, I noticed. It kind of reminds me of, like, um, uh, comics from the 90s. Like, if you ever saw a certain size circle in the page, it was definitely... Um, had a CD, um, compact disc music CD used as a template. If you know, you know. And look, they're all over the place. It's so weird. I, I, it's an interesting style choice because in a lot of ways, it, it, I don't know, is it saving room? I don't know. It just, it really does nothing for it. And stylistically, like, it's overdone. But, you know, sign of the times, whatever. The art does improve, you know, from the earlier stuff to the later stuff, for sure. This is so funny. Like I said, so corny. Such a sign of the times. He is... Joker is, like, painting over the line in the road and then repainting it. I mean, that is, like, 
full on like wily coyote roadrunner kind of wacky hijinks and I'm like living for it like the charm of these stories like I've never really read these old stories because like I came into comics like in the 80s and like you know so that's when they were starting to become I guess a little edgier and grim and gritty a little more adult so I never really felt the need to read like this old Batman and now that I am though, like it's, I just love it. It's like such a time piece, you know what I mean? It's like so charming and corny and just like very much of its time. There's something where he says, what does he say? It's like the craziest thing. Oh yeah, here he goes. Okay, so, and one of these days I'm going to give you a free jaw massage. Mm hmm. Okay. So, you know, just like things like that. It just sounds a little off, right? And I love the randomness of the colors. Like, I think you have like four colors available. So it's like green, 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 red, 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 blue, yellow, purple, orange. Um, This is a great panel, too. I like how, because like I said, like, uh, I, I do feel like he's using like assistants or a studio system a lot only because uh the art seems pretty inconsistent in some um instances whereas you know you could blame it on like maybe a different inker or maybe a different you know you know sometimes artist styles change especially if they work for comics over the course of you know a couple of decades or whatever i really don't know how long bob kane did batman or how long his career was or at least how long his name was on it love this too they defeat him and then the last panel is just him talking from jail i'll get it out i'll get out i always do no hell jail can hold the joker i mean it's like rest easy reader we will have another joker tale oh we will i love them running on the top of the car i was thinking about this too like joker is like doesn't strike me as like i mean is he physically fit you know i mean jared leto of course was but it's like you know, when they get into fisticuffs and stuff, he's just like this skinny, like, you know, he looks so frail in a lot of ways. Like, and Batman has no problem beating the shit out of him physically all the time, which I kind of love. Now, this is the splash page. See, the art is improving already. Um, I love this Penguin story. It's so much fun. I don't know. This is, like I said, this is just such a great um, panel. You know, it's funny because... Uh, of my association with Big Bang. Um, I have a new, like every time I think I can't love Big Bang um, more, I have a new appreciation for them looking at this older stuff. Cause I see exactly like the inspiration that all of their stuff comes from and just how well they pull it off. Like it looks just like this, like Chris Ecker, like can pull off the style, like nobody's business. And it's so much fun. I just love how corny and like um, over the top and like, uh, just like their egos are so out of control the villains so it's not it's just as important to have like a clever scheme as it is to you know benefit financially from it four and 20 blackbirds baked in a pie and he's like the 24th one or whatever or i don't know the math ain't math and but i don't care you know what i mean but it's just kind of funny oh here we go another circle but this almost could be a CD circle, but well before it's time. Did Bob Kane predict compact discs? Probably not. Um, I love the penguin, like sort of dressed as a pirate. He's got this parrot on his shoulder. It's just so, just wonderfully silly in so many ways. And just, but I have to say a little bit goes a long way. 64 pages, <laughs> by the end I was like, Thank God it's over. Give me a give me a modern comic, please. Um, but, but fun, like I don't know, just the the imagination. You know, it's like because you don't. I mean, it's just so wacky. Like this this eccentric millionaire is putting a a farm on his the top of his rooftop, and you know they basically catch Penguin here, and he's like, "Oh my God, my nerves are so rattled. Do you mind if I smoke my pipe to calm down?" And Batman's like, well, let me inspect it first. Um, I'm no fool. Uh, except for the fact that I put popcorn in it and now it exploded in your face and I gotcha. I mean, my God. 
so funny, right? But I love the art. It is so good. It is like this, like the contraptions they set up. I'm going to put, I'm going to put Batman in a cage, chain Robin to the wall and set up a bow and arrow that will be triggered to pierce his chest when this freaking sparrow goes for a bite to eat. Like, it's so wacky. But then I'm going to leave to see it not play through to give you the opportunity to escape. And I'm going to leave an umbrella on the floor close enough for you to kick over to Batman, have him dismantle, and rather than just, like, get out of the cage and save you or whatever, he only seconds to go, and he managed to make his own makeshift bow and arrow using the umbrella handle as his arrow to knock that arrow out of the path of Robin. I mean, oh my God, that is like a long way to a punchline, I'm telling you. But like I said, amazing. I almost died gagging when I saw this giant penguin. Like, I, like they must just steal to make this stuff. Like he makes a blimp that looks like a penguin. And then um, Batman says the most ironic thing I've ever seen in a comic book ever trust the penguin's vanity to create his own legendary bird, a giant penguin that can fly. Cruise closer, Robin. I'm going to investigate. Okay, so he's knocking penguin for making a penguin ship in his image when we have the Batmobile, the bat boat, the batarangs, um, bat everything. You know what I mean? So I just thought that was funny and worth mentioning. And then he quotes, I don't know, just I love the literary puns and everything like this. This one, um, is, is this like the Sunday newspaper or something? Why does it have a header on every single page? And I thought that, except for the fact that they're numbered down here too. So I thought maybe Bob Kane's ego got so out of control that he had to have his credit and title on every single page of the book. But this is also... Um, a great Two-Face story. And I guess this is the first Two-Face, the actor before Harvey Dent. And I kind of love that DC like did this. And I kind of have an answer for my own question. Like, you know, I think it came to my attention um, as a new DC reader reading Who's Who in the DC Universe when it would be like Clayface 1, 2, 3, and like something happened to every one of them. And so this actor who is the first two face winds up dying. I think they killed a lot of like villains. Like didn't the Joker die at the end of Batman one? Like just cause I guess that's how you end a story. Not thinking that, oh wait, we might want to bring these back. This is awesome. I love two faces split apartment. He's sitting at a desk, even the desk. Like I feel like the newspaper, like one side should have been the, you know, I don't know the New York Post and the, well, the Gotham Gazette. And I don't, is this even, is Gotham even exist? I feel like I haven't heard really anyone mention Gotham, but they have. And I love this too. Like the two-faced puns are all over the place. And Batman has to point it out. Uh, this is where we get off and Batman and Robin take over. It's poetic justice. We spotted two-faces hold up of a two-wheeled handsome cab from atop a two-decker bus. <laughs> what do you know? So crazy, right? And this was throwing me off too, because is there is this incorrect? Somebody watching me help me out. So how did you, how geographically is this possible? So the river runs under the bridge, and then on the other side, how is that happening? Is that possible? I don't. What am I missing here? Maybe this is going down, and the river just disappears, or it starts there. That doesn't make sense. So. Is that a no prize? I don't know. But I just, you know, my art brain. Um, it's so funny, too, because it's like, you know, comics obviously became way more polished. Like, I feel like a lot of the art is sometimes wonky. Some of the heads look a little too big and stuff. This is super fun. I love this. Secrets of the Bad Cave. Um, by the way, before I forget to mention it, DC, if you're going to continue printing these treasury-sized artifact editions, please do the Alex Toth Super Friends one. It's like my all-time favorite. I actually have it. I've done a video on it. But you know, I'm going to jump on that pic simile if it comes out. I'm wondering if it's possible with the Hanna-Barbera connection, but make it happen. Anything's possible. Um, <laughs> 
And the, I don't know, just the corniness. The, the corniness is so ridiculous and over the top. And I just, the choreography, the storytelling, the pacing. Like, he sets a, an alarm clock two minutes ahead. And then when, when it goes off, Batman's like, what is that noise? And when he turns his head, he hits him in the head with his coin. I mean, it's like, this is your plan. I just adore it. Drive-in theater. The locations of these are always great, too. It's like so classic like an art museum or you know it's usually where these things take place i guess people want to steal art and then two-face gets hung at the end and that's how he ends his career but i kind of like actor two-face i i i don't know scarecrow one of my favorite batman villains ever and i have to say you know there's so many panels on um all these pages and i think that's very stylistically a sign of the times. So when we're getting these great splash pages, I'm living for them because they're so cool and they really set. They're they're very much like a title page in a lot of ways. Um, this I just like the way they talk and the way I don't know. Just so uh, Scarecrow is a Jonathan Crane is a, a psychology professor, and um, he's teaching a class and he shoots a gun in the class as an example. At least. They point out the absurdity of it later because I was just like, wow, that's really crazy. Um, <laughs> just see, isn't that just fun and charming? I don't know, them like looking over the rooftop and then you can see him down there and he's like, looks like a walking scarecrow. Come on, Robin. And they say it over and over again about like his queer <laughs> moving legs or something. It's just so funny. And then uh, it, it's like him throwing the garbage can at him, the running, the silhouettes running down the fire escape. You know, I have to say like this gave me a new appreciation and I didn't need a new appreciation for the Batman television show with Adam West because um, I adore it. That was like my introduction to Batman. <laughs> I worship it. It'll always be my favorite Batman. However, stylistically, you realize like how underrated, uh, it is because they captured so much of the greatness of of this classic Batman, like that arguably, you know, put Batman on the map. So kudos to that, like the corniness, the, the you know, the plots of the villains and the bright colors of the sets, like so well done. Circles everywhere, circle gets a square. And then finally, the, and then the randomly, because I don't know how this came together, why they were doing this. Maybe they were just like, I mean, reprints are cheap way to make, I don't know, whatever, a reprint. They were doing lots of reprints back in the day. And so this treasury collection just happened. Isn't that kind of crazy? So, um, and then they just randomly throw in this, like, uh, what do you call it? Word search. And I love that image of Batman right there. Another gorgeous splash page. Finally, Catwoman. She in another like the crazy way. So she gets out of jail, and um, she goes back to her hideout. She's catching up on her reading, which I love, and I love that her apartment just is waiting for her when she comes out of jail. And then um, she's reading this book about um, greatest women criminals of all time, and she's not in it, so she's pissed and throws it in the fireplace and. Now she has to prove that she's the greatest woman criminal of all time by defeating all these other female criminals that are being played by this woman. It's just so, I mean, are you with me? It's so wild, right? So much fun. This kind of reminded me a little bit of Dick Sprang, who I haven't read any Dick Sprang Batman, and I really, really hope that they do some facsimile Dick Sprang issues if they haven't already which they probably already have this cracks me up too uh, he's playing so they're she's gonna go to this play of samson and delilah and batman is in disguise as samson to capture her and she, catwoman captures him and then but they take off his robe and he has the batman costume with the samson head and she's like we're gonna take pictures um uh, to get a chuckle from your fans. And then he like rips out of it and she's like, you fools, it was made out of balsa wood and cardboard. And they should be like, we're the fools. You're the one who chained it to him, bitch. Like what the fuck? Anyway, love this. So much fun. Please 
speaking of the Batman television series, great, right? And this on the back, tabletop diorama, I guess you can like cut this out and make it. Like, I wonder how many people actually did that. If you're watching and you had one back in the day and you did that, please sound off in the comments. So much fun, you guys, right? Like unexpected uh, treasure. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I need the subscribers. Um, hit like and I will bring you more soon.